welcome back to Future Proof with our band podcast. I'm your host, Paki. I'm very excited today because this is our first English content. Our band podcast is definitely something you don't want to miss. For each episode, we will invite our founders from the past 52 years to chat with us, learn with us, and future proof with us. And without further ado, I want to introduce you our special guest today. She is a mother. She is also a very experienced not for profit leader in the outdoor experiential educational sector. She has been working for Outbound for 30 years, started in the 90s as an intern instructor and became executive director at Outbound Canada. Currently, she is the strategic project manager at Outbound International, focusing on fundraising, global impact and branding. Please welcome Sarah. Hi. <laughs> Hello Sarah. Thank you so much. Hi, Maki. Hello. So, thank you so much for spending your night time with us. What time is it exactly there? It is 8:30 p.m. in the evening. So now if I was in Canada's kind of northern lake area, the background is what it would look like right now <laughs> with the sun setting in the wilderness, which is typical of where we go tripping at Outward Bound Canada. but I live just north of Toronto so it's just starting to get dark yeah nice thank you so much for your time and before we go into our chat i want to say happy early mothers day to you because you. it will be mothers day soon the first question i want to ask is that can you share with our audience how do we meet <laughs> Well, yes, and that you're you're like the social media guru for me, marketing guru. So I've definitely learned a lot from you. So I work for Outward Bound International, and one of my hats that I wear, my roles, is around our global communication strategy. But unlike you, I'm not a like that's not my background. I'm not a marketer. I didn't have a lot of that experience. So I'm kind of learning on the fly or as I go. and we just had a world conference so that was our first virtual world conference <laughs> that we've had and it was a you know great success i think we had over 300 participants from around the world it was over 3 days we had 40 different presenters and 70 different sessions and one of the sessions that i wanted was was going to do was around social media and social media strategy and how oh, i i think i reached out to you because or to your executive director because I was looking at all of the great social media work that was coming out of the school I was kind of looking at well who else like I'm not an expert I can speak about what our bound international is doing but who's actually really knows what they're doing and could teach you know the uh, the network and share resources and so I got connected to you because Nick Cotton said oh you've got to connect with Packy cuz she's the one who's in charge of the the whole social media strategy and then we also connected with Dala in Oman and it was amazing because you two the two of you together are doing really great things in your in your countries and very different cultures right but connected through the outward bound philosophy and program and different approaches And so it was really interesting and so the three of us did a session together for the world conference and I think it was very successful I think people really appreciated the resources and the information that was shared. Yeah, definitely. It was very fun working together. We in you know, we were all in different country but then it didn't stop us for sharing what we know and our passion to our bound. It was just very eye-opening. And I also know that you You didn't just do that session with us. You had other sessions, which was very much related to what you do at Our Bound International. You did a session for fundraising and uh, global impact. Can you share with us a little bit more of what you do at Our Bound International? Sure. So Our Bound International is the global coordinating organization of the Our Bound Network. So there are 37 schools in 35 countries across six continents. So it's really quite a quite a uh, you know a a big network of schools. Some schools like Outward Bound UK are over 80 years old and some schools are just starting up like Outward Bound Hubei which is in China, Outward Bound Bahrain in the Middle East. It's a quite a diverse network. And so my role Outward Bound International is a very it's very small. There's just the executive director and myself we're the kind of the two main people and then we have some other consultants but i 
focus on fundraising. So supporting Outward Bound International to raise funds to do the work of coordinating the network, but also working with schools to help them in their fundraising. Today, I had a meeting with a school who is starting to do some fundraising. So helping them, you know, what are some things that we can do to help them in their fundraising efforts? The other area I, I focus on is global impact reporting. So it's our research and evaluation and impact reporting. And so we've created a global outcomes survey. This is an outcomes tool that participants at the end of their course fill out, and then it all goes into a big global database. And then we can look at the data and see, you know, how are we doing in, we, we look at five different outcomes. So we look at resilience, we look at self-confidence, we look at social competence, compassion, and environmental responsibility. And then we're able to make statements about how Outward Bound is impacting young people in those five areas. But it also helps us to identify maybe areas that we're not having as strong an impact as we thought. And so then that can feed back into our staff training and to our curriculum development. So it's a really useful tool. Outward Bound Hong Kong has been involved with this initiative right from the beginning. So it's great. Hong Kong students are filling out this survey and that's really helpful. And then the other thing I do is a communication. So I oversee our website. We have a, a new website, all our newsletters, our digital publications, our social media. And then I'm also part of our school review team. So that's something that every Outward Bound school has to be reviewed by Outward Bound International every two years, just to make sure that you know, they're running effective programs, that they have good financial systems and governance and safety and risk management. And so I help to visit schools and to do those reviews. So it's really interesting work. It's really exciting work. And I love working with all the schools and getting to meet people like yourself. The last few years, it's been different because I haven't traveled as much, but so lots of <laughs> Zoom calls at all sorts of different times of the day. But I am looking forward to when we can start to travel again and I can visit schools again. Yeah, I remember you said that you have visited Hong Kong before for a meeting or what was that? Hmm. For? Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was, was it 2018? So at that time, I was part of the operations committee with Outward Bound International and we had meetings and board meetings and they were, Outward Bound Hong Kong hosted them. So we stayed and we didn't stay at the base. We stayed kind of outside, but we went there quite a bit and we went, you know, sea kayaking and we went out on the water and it was great. And then I stayed in Hong Kong for a few days after it was beautiful. And I hiked up to hike that you do right up. Dragon back. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah. You can do it in a day. Yeah. I, I think it would be that because beautiful the beautiful views. Like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so no, no I, I really, I really loved it. It was it was beautiful. I'd love to come back. Yeah. Yes, come back anytime. And <laughs> I, I would just have to say, as a part of the Global School Network, we are very grateful to, you know, to be able to work with our Bound International, like you guys. I know that you have been in the outdoor industry for many, many years. Why do you enjoy outdoors so much? You know, for me, nature, the outdoors is a place where I get re-energized. It's a place where I get focused. I usually start every day with a run outside and it's, it just grounds me. It gets me ready for the day and it energizes me and being in nature and, you know, seeing all the changing seasons in Canada, we have, you know, four different seasons. And so right now all the birds are coming out and the flowers and it's a really beautiful place to be. doesn't matter what season it is. It's just beautiful to be out there. Yeah, I'm sure the experience that people get from our about Canada or anywhere of the world, it would be very different from Hong Kong because of the nature and that makes the experience different. So if I have to ask you from your previous years, what would be one that is most memorable? Well, gosh, it's hard to say one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had some, I've had the privilege of having some really incredible experiences. Maybe the most interesting for your audience would be that three years ago, Outward Bound Canada was celebrating our 50th anniversary and we did an expedition to the Magnetic North Pole. And I went on that, that was a fundraising expedition. And it was incredible because we were way up in the Arctic 
24 hour sunlight and it's all just sea ice. So frozen icebergs, we were traveling cross country skiing across the frozen ocean, camping on the ice at night and everything was just white, but it was beautiful. You might think it would be boring because it's all just white, but it was really beautiful and so different from what you'd normally see. So I think that was very memorable because I also knew I'd probably never go back up there again. Mm -hmm. And as you know, with climate change, a lot of the ice packing in in the northern Arctic regions is starting to break up. And so it may not be possible for people to go there in, you know, 50 years. So I think for me, I was really aware of that when I was there, that I was a real privilege and that also that it was changing. Yeah. You can witness the change, right? When you're, you were up there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And for being so passionate about the outdoor, have you always been like that or someone inspire you? Well, I would say my father inspired me. So I'm from a big family. I'm the youngest of six kids And um, from my very earliest memories and days, we were always outside as a family. My mom and dad, that's what we did. We'd go for walks in the woods. That's how we recreated. And my father loved nature. So he was always out putting up bird boxes and, you know, feeding the deer and, you know, tromping around in the woods. And we were lucky enough where we lived that we had access to that. So I would say that my love for nature and for the outdoors came from my father when I was very young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually most of the cases are from parents, from family, and then um, you grow up with that and then you just fall in love with that. But how do you sustain that passion to the outdoor as an educator? Because it's been a very long journey. 30 years is very long. Yeah. Well, I was lucky. I took a special program in outdoor experiential education. So when I decided to be a teacher, I got my teaching degree, but I also got a specialty in outdoor education. And so I chose to work in the outdoors. And that was a choice. I've only had a few years in the actual classroom. Most of my teaching has been in an outdoor classroom. So I think I've been able to keep that passion because I made the choice to work in that environment. And then I've worked really hard to build a career in that environment. So, you know, I started as an instructor at Outward Bound Canada and I did that for about 10 years. But then I knew that in order to keep in this industry, I needed to do other things within Outward Bound. And so I moved into management and then eventually I was the executive director at Outward Bound Canada. And along the way I did things like I got my master's of education I got my MBA so that I could understand how to run an organization. So I was doing those things that would help me to kind of move through the organization so I could have the skills to stay in that environment because I did love it. And I also really believe just so wholeheartedly in the value of what we do at Outward Bound. Mm -hmm. And I love that I work for, and I'm sure you're the same, that we work for an organization that we know has an impact and that it's making a difference and it's really good for people and for society. So that feels really good to me. And so I've worked really hard to, to stay, you know, in this industry. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. Like when you know that every day you're working hard for something very meaningful, it really keeps you moving forward so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. every day. Let's wear a different hat right now. So I know that you have a teenage son, Hugh. Does he like outdoor like you do? He does. Sometimes he pretends he doesn't, but but he does. He, uh, I I feel my husband and I are both outdoor educators and we've both been in this field for over 30 years. So I don't think he had much of a chance before he was a year old. He was on a sea kayak trip with us camping. Every summer we go on a whitewater canoe trip. We do lots of hiking and skiing. We're outside every day. So He is very comfortable in the outdoors. Yeah. That's very, very nice. And has he been on any Outward Bound trip? Not yet. In Canada, our youngest are usually around the age of 14. So he'll be 14 this fall. So that might be something for him next summer. He does go to summer camp, though. So he does a sleepover camp and he'll do that this summer for two weeks. 
That's awesome. I'm sure he is looking forward to that. So, as a mother, do you truly believe that it's very beneficial for kids to spend time outdoor? Does it make them a different person compared to others that do not do the same? Oh, for sure. I think not just even as a mother. I think just as a, as an individual. But yes, as a mother, I think young people need to be in nature so much more. I think. It develops confidence, having those experiences and trying new things. It really builds resilience. It teaches them a lot about the world. I mean, there's so many things that happen in nature that then we can learn from, like the way that systems work. And you can learn, you know, math and science and all these different things that we learn in school get replicated in nature. And I think there's a lot of connection. So I think it is a really powerful classroom and learning place. But I also think it allows young people, and I know this happened to me, just to sometimes just be free and be outdoors and not have the structures and the rules. They can kind of run around. They can be dirty. They can use their imagination. I remember being really young and being on my own in the woods. I have a very, really vivid memory. And just feeling really comfortable being alone in the woods, and I think that when you have those really pivotal experiences when you're young, it builds confidence and it builds a sense of self, but also of the world. You know, a connection to the world and the world outside of you as well. So I think it's really important because it is unstructured, right? Being in the outdoors, it, it's it's a different kind of learning. It's a different classroom, and I think that kids need that. They need to have that space. And that freedom to use their imagination to be themselves, to explore, to experience. Yeah, that's so true. And how would you advise someone to build a habit for their kids to spend more time outdoor? Because you know nowadays technology is a big thing, and it's very hard to find a balance sometimes, especially when we are living in the city, and so are you right now. So how do we start with that? How do we start? Helping our kids to build a habit like that,、hmm. having like a family routine, like every night after dinner, go for a walk, right? It could even, you know, just go for a half hour walk outside instead of sitting down to watch TV or going on your phones or your computer. It just becomes part of your routine. In Canada, I don't know if this is the same in Hong Kong, but, but more and more kids get driven to school, and. I remember walking to school, so I think that if you can walk to school, right? You know, if your kids are young, walk with them to school, and that's hard if you're working as well. But I think it's trying. Like walking to me is something that's so easy; anyone can do it. It doesn't cost any money. You just have to go out your door and walk. And so I think, you know, I always think if if the world's leaders or educators were enlightened. That every child from when they're five to eighteen to when they leave high school, if every day they built in like a half hour walk into their school time, that young people would be happier and more fit and more confident. There would be so many things that they would get just from having physical time in the outdoors every single day. So if that's not happening. In our school system, then for families to to build that in, to find a way to build that in, even a couple of days a week or on the weekend, you know, going for a family walk together. You just mentioned the money, and I think that's a very big selling point because walking is free and spending time in the nature is free, and I think people should do it more. Right, spending money to buy an iPhone is like thousands of dollars, but then spending a day in the nature with with your family is awesome. It's free, and yes, we should just influence our our, our friends and family more on doing so. So I want to talk a little bit more about future proofing. So we have been talking about how kids should spend more time in the outdoor. How have you been future proofing your son, Hugh? Well, <laughs> outdoor activities, I think, is a great one. You know, when we we go every summer, we go on a camping trip, canoe trip, and it's where you learn by natural consequences. This is something that happens on an outward bound program. So you know you have to deal with the weather. You have to deal with you don't get the fire going. Then you know dinner is late. You're hungry, but it's that's life, 
right? Like things happen. And I think a lot of young people are more challenged with what to do when things don't go the way they think they should go, right? When it's the unexpected. And when you're on an outward bound trip or an outdoor trip, the unexpected happens all the time, right? It's all, it's a beautiful day and all of a sudden it starts raining. So, oh, where's your raincoat, you know? And so you learn to start having your raincoat at the top of your pack because, you know, you learn. You learned the first time you got wet and now you have it ready. And things like taking care of yourself, how to take care of yourself. And then that goes back to self-care. And self-care is so important in everything we do in our life, right? Like taking care of yourself. And that helps with mental health and well-being. So I think for Hugh, back to that, I think a lot of experiences in the outdoors is one way that he's been kind of learning natural consequences. The other thing is something that's very important to, to me and, and to my family is giving back to the community. So I volunteer at a homeless shelter. We raise funds for lots of different causes. And so I think my son sees that. And I know that I see in him a sense of that generosity of giving, you know, or compassion, which is one of the pillars that Outward Bound is to give to others and give of yourself. And so he sees that modeled a lot in, in my behavior, my husband's behavior. And so I now see him doing that. Like we'll be somewhere and he wants to give money to something or he wants to help out, or we saw a homeless person and he gave them money. So, you know, he's very aware of helping others. And so I think that's really important because I think for the future, I hope that young people will be compassionate leaders of future society and will have that sense of taking care of others, that social purpose. That's beautiful. The elements that you just mentioned, and I think that's what makes Outward Bound more relevant now than ever. You know, in Hong Kong, our advertising tagline is future-proof youth to build a stronger Hong Kong. And really, future is now something that people really care and concern about, especially after the social unrest and, you know, globally with the COVID and uh, students have been showing signs of depression and it's very important that people is able to stay more resilient and more hopeful so that they can come back as a stronger person. So globally, I believe it's the same. And um, speaking of global relevancy, as an educator, how do you convince people that being in the outdoor is very important? compared to, you know, the lifestyle right now, a lot of people are on their phones. I mean, they learn on their phones, but how do we convince, how do you convince people that it's even more important to stay outdoor? It's, it's hard. There's a lot of competing kind of things for people's attention these days. And, you know, even with my son, right? Like, I'll be like, oh, let's go walk the dog. So let's go outside. And he wants to be on his, his phone or something like that. I think you have to take little steps. And I think that, you know, saying to someone, hey, do you want to come and do a 30-day program, wilderness program, might be too big of a step. So it's having some kind of incremental experiences that expose them to the outdoors. And I think for most people, once they get comfortable, right, it, that often it's that, you know, there may be that fear or whether it's the weather or what are they going to wear? Are they going to be fit enough? All those different things that prevent us from, from doing something. But once they get over that, maybe just even going for a hike or going for a walk or going to a new place in the outdoors, they become more comfortable and they are, they're more comfortable in themselves in the outdoors and in nature. And I think most people tend to have you know, they, they can realize just that feeling of well-being that you get from being in the outdoors, from having, you know, being physical, you know, being, you know, surrounded by flora and fauna and having those experiences with people in that place. Usually people come back and they feel better. And I know that studies have, have been done saying that just even half an hour a day in nature can improve people's mental health and their well-being quite considerably, right? And there's there's now in Canada, they're actually, doctors are prescribing nature as part of, like it's like a medical prescription for people, for all sorts of different things, whether it's, you know, mental health issues or physical issues, they're actually writing them a prescription and saying, go and spend half an hour every day in nature because that actually will help you from a health perspective. So I think that's really interesting. I think when people 
are given the opportunity to go do that and they see it for themselves, I hope and I think that that will impel them to do it more. That is very true. I really like when you said we have to start with small steps because this month I have just gone on a four-day staff expedition. We spent four days on our sailing boat spirit of our, our bound Hong Kong. And before that, I have never joined any our bound courses in my life. And I was really worried. And then we were talking about, oh, how do we go to the bathroom? How do we survive without our okay. phone for four days? And we, we just had all kinds of worries. Yeah. But then when we got onto the boat, it felt like we kind of forgot everything. We were able to cook on the boat while we were sailing and we did not even think about our phone. We just used our phone to take pictures. We did not have any uh, uh, internet or anything, Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi, nothing at all. And we survived perfectly. And then a lot of us, when we came back, we just, we just wanted more. We were like, four days is not enough. So yeah. I can imagine, I can kind of picture how our participant would feel after a course, feeling a lot of emotion inside, but is positive and also wanting more. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good thing that you have been in this industry and witness a lot of people's change in their life. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and it's nice, like you mentioned that, you know, everyone was kind of having those concerns, like that nervousness. And I think that's the other nice thing is that any, everyone who comes on an Outward Bound course has some kind of nervousness about something, mm -hmm. whether it's about, you know, being in a group or having to try the different activities. Like there's always something that people are worried about or unsure about. And so it really kind of creates a bond between you because you yes. feel that you're all kind of in the same space together. And I think that's really powerful, that group experience. Yeah, exactly. And when you look back to those fear and you would be like, well, it's, it's nothing at all. I, I can do that. Right. And it, it just gives you a little bit more confidence and it feels great. I want to hear a little bit more about your experience with our Bound Canada. I know that you were there for a kind of like a crisis and then you kind of rebuilt the schools. And can you share with us more about, about that? Sure. Like a lot of Outward Bound schools that have been around for a while, we've had kind of ups and downs, good times and bad. So in 2008, which was also the time of the economic collapse globally, Outward Bound Canada was having a really challenging time financially. And I had actually left the organization for a bit. And they asked me to come back and help them to rebuild and to build a more efficient an effective business model that would work for the times. And so that was in 2010 that I started as the executive director. And we're a huge country. Canada is the second largest country in the world. So it's a big, huge geography to run out where bound programs across um, and also for staff to communicate across. It takes, you know, five or six hours to fly from one end of the country to the other. And so logistically, and it's very expensive to run the wilderness programs. So we shifted from a center-based program, which I know you have it in Hong Kong, you have a school and a center, and most outward bound schools have that. And we decided to get rid of that and to run all mobile programs. So really what we have across the country is we have kind of logistics centers where staff just do some planning. We don't own anything. We kind of rent, you know, some storage area and some office space, but the students never come to a base. They never sleep inside. So they will meet the instructors and then they're in the wilderness for two to three weeks. So the shortest courses we do have, now we do have some urban programs. So we also started running urban programs then, and we run them in Toronto and Vancouver, which are big cities. So it's would be like running programs in Hong Kong. And those are five day, but the, the participants are camping in parks and along the Lake Ontario. And so they're actually camping in urban centers. So that was a model that was really effective because it was more cost effective for us. And it also allowed us to start to work with a whole new group of young people when we did the urban programs and have access to more people. Yeah, I mean, when I hear your story just now and reflecting on how we run our business in Hong Kong, 
a lot of time we go out to the wilderness. We don't stay in one place and, and just stay there for the five days. And that's why we have been encouraging people to come more. Not It's not just a one-time experience. You can keep coming every year and your experience is going to be different because every time you're in different places, you're with different people. Mm. Uh, so is it the same how you would encourage people to come more when you were managing the school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think you you brought up a good point in that each time you do an Outward Bound experience, you're exposed to different people. And I think that's one of the real strengths of Outward Bound is that most people come, they don't come with people they know. I mean, school kids might, but year to year that can change. And that that group dynamic is so important to the learning that happens. So yes, like you, we, we may have some participants who come when they're 14 and then they'll come when they're 15 and 16 and they may come back when they're an adult because they remember that, you know, they come back and say, oh, I really want to do Outward Bound again. So I think that's the beauty of it is that you can come back and have different learning. So yeah, it, it's much richer that way. Yeah, definitely. And I think as an adult, I think you would experience it even more because with your own personal experience in life and then come back to another class, you will have different views of life and things around you. I think that's yeah. Yeah, that's true is the beauty of our bound that mm-hmm. we have to keep telling people about it. We are also very proud and excited about our bound international's new partnership with menu life. Mm-hmm. What is, what exactly is the goal of this partnership? Hmm, that's great. And I'm glad you brought that up. Mm-hmm. So Menu Life is a global financial services company. It's headquartered in Toronto, but they have operations throughout Asia, in the US and Australia. And they were really interested in partnering with us. So they actually reached out to us through a connection in Canada because they're launching a new global impact strategy. And it's all around creating partnerships for a sustainable future. So they want to engage with charities that can work with Manulife, that can be a partner working towards sustainable futures and sustainability. And they love that we were launching a global environmental project. So Outward Bound International, about a year ago, we introduced our global environmental charter. And it's really a set of parameters and goals that we are trying to achieve globally as well as within each school in certain areas like in energy usage and water in in transportation so really looking at our operations and our footprint and our carbon footprint and how can we reduce that because we know that we're an outdoor organization so we know that we have a really strong environmental ethic but we haven't ever really looked closely at how we actually run our businesses or run our schools. Mm -hmm. And so really taking responsibility for that and saying, how can we actually be part of the solution? And so the environmental charter was created a year ago. And this new project that's rolling out this year is to actually connect the charter to curriculum for students, to tools and resources for schools to help them to reduce their carbon footprint for training materials for staff. And so our partnership with Manulife has allowed us to hire someone to oversee that project and to provide the funding to roll that out to the network and roll the training out, develop the curriculum. And so that's really exciting. And so we now have a group forming like an advisory group who's going to work with our coordinator to develop all those resources and materials for the school's Mm, it's definitely something that we need so much right now. So mm. my last question, what would be your wish for our Bell in the next 10 years? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess my wish is that Outward Bound is more known than it is, that the awareness of Outward Bound as a nature-based solution, as, a, as an organization that does future-proof young people, that that is more widespread, that more people look to Outrebound as the organization that can help in this area, that we have more schools in more countries, and that those schools are sustainable, right? That they're running effective programs that have impact, and ultimately that more young people or more people around the globe are having, you know, access to Outrebound experiences. So, you know, that it's a healthy, thriving, growing network, making a difference. I think that would be a wish. And 
And maybe just one last thing to think, I think it's really important in the next few years that we organizationally partner with other global organizations. So I'd love to see Outward Bound at the table with other international NGOs, because I think we have a lot to add and I think we have a lot to contribute to the conversation. And so to be a voice at that table, I think would be really great. Definitely. Same here as well, (laughs) because you see such a good thing running every day. You just want more and more people knowing it. All right. So we're now coming to the last part of the podcast. So we play this game with every single of our our bounds on this podcast is called quick five. So what happened is I will ask you five different questions and you will need to answer it very quickly without thinking just one word or one sentence. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. So the first one, one future skill that you would want in 2022. Okay, for me, right? Uh, For me. For you. Well, I think to improve my social media understanding and my work that I'm doing with social media and be more effective at it. Awesome. You're on it already. (laughs) So, okay. Question number two one thing that you want to challenge yourself during COVID? You know, I mentioned that I'm used to traveling a lot with work. So a a challenge for me has been not and kind of staying put, but I think that that's been a good challenge because it's finding the adventure in the everyday and it's finding, you know, starting to look like in my local neighborhood, really appreciating where I am and loving where I am and not having to travel and get on a plane to have that experience, but just having it right, right around me. Yeah, that's so true. Same here. Okay, next is, what is the most resilient thing you have ever done? It was kind of crazy. I used to do something called adventure racing. Mm. And I don't know if you've ever heard of the Eco Challenge. It used to be on television and and it was like a 10-day race. And you'd race in teams all in the wilderness and and you'd race all over the world. So I used to race in this team. We were a sponsored team in Canada and we would do races like that would last five or six days and we'd sleep for five hours the whole time. And we'd be biking and running and swimming and paddling and horseback riding and climbing. And you just do that nonstop as a team until you finish. (laughs) So that was crazy because uh, we would be really exhausted and cold and wet and you'd have huge blisters on your feet and we'd be hallucinating because we were so tired. And so I did that for about five years. I raced with this team and traveled around the world. So that was that was kind of a crazy time. But I, I developed a lot of resilience. Definitely. I can tell <laughs> five years and only sleep, sleep five, five hours in 10 days. Some of the long races you'd sleep, we would, you'd only sleep, like you could sleep a lot if you wanted, but if you wanted to do well and be competitive, you wouldn't yeah. sleep. So you try to get by with as little sleep as you, as you could. Wow. Yeah. That sounds amazing and unbelievable. <laughs> so next, what is the best piece of advice you have ever heard or received? I think for me, it is that you can only control your own response or reaction or attitude, you know, so you can't control what happens to you or the external world. You don't have any control over that. What you can control, though, is how you respond to what happens and how you react and and your attitude. So, you know, it's raining outside where you can't control that, but you can control your reaction and response. And so that's been a good learning for me that it really comes from within. And if you try to control the external world, you just get frustrated. It doesn't, doesn't work. Love this one. Love this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one. Three words to describe our bound. Well, I have one word connected to three things. So connections is really important. Connections to self first, connections to others, and then connections to nature. So when I think of Outward Bound, I think of its connection to those three things. Right. I love that. Sarah, I just have to say, every time when I talk to you, mostly about Outward Bound, your experience at Outward Bound, I just always see this wonderful smile on your face. And 
that really, really inspire me because I think I can learn that from you to really enjoy and love every moment of what you do. And this is something I will try to future-proof myself in the future because it's only sustainable if you love what you do. So thank you so much for your time today. And thank you. Um, yes, thank you. Yes, I know it's super fun and we can do it more. And, <laughs> and then for those who are listening, thank you so much for future proofing with us today. Make sure to share with us what resonated with you and what inspired you. We love to hear from you. Subscribe and share this podcast with your friends and family. And we will see you again next time. Goodbye, everyone.